Hi thinkers, welcome to the microprocessor playlist on ThinkX Academy. This is the lecture 2.4 where we are going to study about the access rights byte in the protected mode, right? So in the previous tutorial, which is 2.3, we have briefly discussed about selectors and descriptors. And now we are going to study about the access rights byte and all the knowledge from the protected mode memory tutorial and selectors and descriptors tutorial. We are going to make use of those tutorials in this video. So let's see what is the use of access rights byte. So here I have written three points about access rights byte. The first one says that it controls the access to the protected mode mode segment. Right, so this is actually a byte which we know that one byte is equals to eight bits. So it is an eight bit access rights byte. So it controls access to the protected mode segment, right? So the segment, if the segment is in, in the protected mode, uh, we know that we will have to, we do not, we cannot use the segment address in the protected mode. So we will have to find out the address using the selectors and descriptors. And for that, we will make use of the access rights byte, which basically gives the access to the uh, to the segment address or the uh, pro it gives the address to the instruction so that in the protected mode, we can address the instruction, right? The second point is that if the segment goes beyond this limit, program is interrupted by the microprocessor. So access rights byte will provide some limit and if there is any program which wants to access a specific segment inside of the memory, it is basically going to interrupt the program by indicating a general protection fault. That means that particular segment is basically protected so you cannot access it. That's the main use of access rights byte. The third and the last point is that you can use this byte to specify whether a data segment is write protected or not, right? So whether you can write on that particular segment or not. So we will briefly study about the access rights byte. You can see these are the, this is basically an 8-bit representation of the access rights byte. And you can see it starts from 0 and goes till 7. You can see in each byte we, we have written some uh, letters here. You can see in the zeroth position, you can see there is A. Then here it is read write and ED slash C, E, S, P, L, D, and P. So these are actually, uh, they have some specific purpose. They are used to uh, for different purposes. So this whole byte consists of some code, right? So for example, if I write code 1001111, right? So this is basically an 8-bit access byte and each bit has a specific purpose, right? So for example, if you say this one is the 0th bit, so 1 represents A. A basically means that uh, you can access the segment or not, right? So specifically, they all have uh, their different purposes, which I'm going to write here, all of them, and you will be able to understand the use of them. But before going to that, let let us first analyze the segment register, right? So let's see how the segment register looks like in the protected mode memory addressing. So we have a segment register, you can see it is a 16-bit register, goes from 0 till 15, right? So it is a 16-bit register. So since it is a 16-bit register, we already know that this is inside of the microprocessor 80286 and it goes till core 2 microprocessor, right? So uh, we already know that we have a selector from bit 3 till 15 which is actually a 13-bit selector and we know that we choose selectors from 2 cross 8, 1, 9, 2 descriptors, right? 
तो फर्स्ट वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द सेगमेंट रजिस्टर बेसिकली द रीजन बिहाइंड दिस इज दैट अ सिलेक्टर इज बेसिकली इट इट इंडिकेट्स और यू कैन से इट सिग्नल्स द माइक्रो प्रोसेसर टू यूज द एक्सेस राइट बाइट राइट so we know the use of selector it selects out of these uh, descriptors the second thing is you can see in the second bit we have ti right so i'm going to write here the use of ti so if the value of ti it can be 0 or 1 right so basically if it is if t is 0 then it means we are going to use the global descriptor table global descriptor table if ti is 1 then we are going to uh, sorry the microprocessor is going to use the local descriptor table and we already know that these tables are basically used to select the selectors right the second thing is the rpl in the segment register rpl stands for requested privilege right so uh i'm going to write rpl here rpl stands for requested privilege now this is an important uh thing because you can see rpl takes two bits from 0 to 1 there are two bits so requested privilege let's see what is the use of this so requested privilege basically access or uh, it requests the access privilege level of a memory segment right so i'm going to write here it request the privilege level of a memory segment right of a memory segment all right so what is a privilege what is the meaning of privilege level basically privilege level if this privilege level which i will call at spl if this is uh if this is 0 0 then it means we have the highest privilege right we have the highest privilege and if this is 1 1 it means it is a lowest privilege right so basically this rpl bit will contain 0 0 1 1 0 1 or 1 0 we know the highest is the 0 0 and lowest is the 1 0 uh, so basically if i try to write it in order i can write it like this so this one is the highest and this one is the lowest so basically this request privilege level will be will acquire the two parts of the segment register and it indicates whether the privilege is highest or lowest so uh, basically if this is higher let me give you a simple example let's say that rpl or the requested privilege level by the instruction it is given to be 10 right so this is the privilege level set and then we have the access rights byte which also has uh, on the fifth bit you can see it has a pl which is basically the privilege level right so in the segment register and in the access rights byte both contains the privilege level they both have the privilege level out of these two privilege levels this is an important line that out of these two privilege levels the higher one right so let me just give you an example if rpl is 10 right and let's say the pl which is the privilege level set by the access rights byte right so i'm going to just write in brackets that this is the privilege level of the access uh, rights byte and let's say this sets the level at 1 1 now you can see because 1 0 is higher you can see 10 is higher than 11 sorry this should be 0 so you can see this is 10 and 11 is here so you can see 10 is higher 
than the privilege level set by the access rights byte. In that case, if the requested privilege level is higher than the privilege level set by the access rights byte, then the access is granted. Right? Then the access is granted, which means that the microprocessor instruction can try to access the particular segment. Right? So that's the basic use of privilege level. So we set a privilege level in the access rights byte and also in the segment register then we try to match them and whatever comes to be higher if the request privilege level is higher then we say that the access is granted else the microprocessor will interrupt the program indicating a general protection fault so th that's why it, it was important to introduce the segment register because we are comparing the request privilege level and the privilege level of the access rights byte. So when the access is granted, that means that we are going to use the access rights byte uh, for read write or any other purposes. So let's now study briefly the use of each of the bits inside of the access rights byte. Right. So the first one is A. Now A means this segment a can hold two values either it can be zero or it can be one segment not accessed at zero it means that you can you have not access to the segment and inside here the segment can be accessed right so i'm just writing it in short the second one is uh, you can see r slash w which means it if r is 0 or 1 and if w is 0 or 1 so let's see what will happen if w is 0 or 1 it means that data can be written or not written data can be written or in case of 1 written or not written right so in case of zero you have you cannot write the data and in case of one you can write the data right so i just um uh, i've written it in the wrong fashion so it should be when w is set to zero you have no right to write the data and if it is one you can write the data Similarly, with read also, you can write that the code segment, because we perform read inside of the code segment, here you have you cannot read, may not read, and if it is set to 1, then you can read, right? Next one is the ed slash c, right? So it means we have two bits ed can be 0 or 1 right so if i'm writing this this means that it can be 0 or it can be 1 also then we have c also so c can be 0 and c can be 1 now if ed equals to 0 if ed has a value of 0 the segment expands upward right so the segment expands upward and we know that we have studied in the segment uh, when we studied the segmentation of memory we have studied that upward means the segment lies above that means we are trying to access the data segment in case of one it means segment expands downward and we know downward means the stack segment all right so let's study the c bit right what is the use of c bit it ignores the dpl if it is zero it ignores the dpl right you can see this dpl uh, sixth fifth and the sixth bit are the dpl 
PL means privilege level which we have already studied about. Let me write about D. Right, so DPL are, are combined. You can see uh, these are the dotted ones. That means it is, uh, it can be used as a separate or not separate, right? So fifth and sixth bit can be combined. And it is because the C, seg the C bit will ignore the privilege level and D also. Let's see what is the use of D. So it is basically DPL not separate it is not separate so dpl let's study about dpl which stands for descriptor privilege level right descriptor privilege level so dpl is the descriptor privilege level it basically sets the privilege level of the descriptor and if C is equal to zero, then we are going to ignore this descriptor privilege level. And if it is one, we are going to abide by the DPL, right? Or the privilege level. Now the remaining ones are S, right? We have S also here. The S can be zero or one. You can see the fourth bit is S. If S is zero, that means we are using the system descriptor. And if it is equal to one, then we are going to use the code or the data segment. Code or data segment descriptor. Right, this is the use of S. The remaining is P equals to 0 and P equals to 1. So I will have to write it here. P equals to 0 or P equals to 1. You can see the seventh bit is P. So if P is 0, we have the undefined descriptor, right? So the descriptor is undefined. If P equals to 1, we say that the segment contains the valid, the segment contains valid base plus limit, right? Base plus limit. So let's see if we have uh, Okay, okay, we have one more also, which is E, which is the third bit. So let me write it here. E equals to zero or E equals to one. Right. So if E equals to zero, then the descriptor will describe the data segment. Right. So if E equals to zero, the descriptor is going to describe the data segment else the code segment right so if it is one then it means we are going to access the code segment so that's all this is the whole uh, tutorial about access rights byte and how uh, each and every bit has a specific purpose here so that's all for this tutorial thanks for watching